Welcome back to another episode of the Budget Miata Build presented by Nankang Motorsports and Race Pack. Today we get to work on the interior. First things first, let's address the elephant in the room. We're calling this the budget build and we're putting brand new Recaro seats in it. But wait everyone, when it comes to safety, I think it's best to not cheap out. I think we all know that if you're gonna spend your money anywhere on a track build, it should be on safety because we don't wanna kill ourselves. And more importantly, we're gonna put a bunch of different people in this car. So we're really putting a premium on safety and we're not skimping in that area at all. So. We went with Recaro pole positions. We did a bunch of, uh, of research to figure out what seats fit in this car. It, obviously it's very tight and it's a bit of a challenge to fit a bucket in there. So the pole positions seem to be one of the more popular choices online amongst the Miata guys for a couple of reasons. First of all, they're not super wide through the shoulders. So it gives you decent uh, clearance when closing the door. We'll show you that. I think we'll probably still have a bit of contact with the door card, but apparently they, they fit much better than most seats in Miata's. Uh, because they're not too like pointy in these these uh, shoulder support areas. The other thing we liked about them is they're fairly generous down here, so it means they, they can accommodate a wide variety of driver sizes and shapes. And if you've seen Moose and Pete and Ken and I and all of our buddies, there's a bunch of variation there. And obviously with all the YouTubers we're gonna put in the car, we want them to be able to fit in there as comfortably as possible. So at the end of the day, we felt these were the best seats for the job. And frankly, we run Recaros in a bunch of our cars. We have the SPGs in our FRS and in our S2000. Absolutely love those seats. But we've never tried pole positions before, so we wanted to try them really out of curiosity to see how comfortable they are compared to the SPGs, which I would say is probably our all-time favorite racing bucket. All right, four bolts and this seat is ready to come out. It's Look pretty, how easily it comes it's out. It's pretty light for a factory seat, but it's... Uh, we should reinforce too that, that working on the Miata has been just like a pleasure here, right? It's easy to work on for sure. It's a pretty simple car and we're so familiar with Japanese stuff too. It feels kind of like home. This uh, patch job on this uh, lower oh, cushion no. is... Lovingly done by someone's grandma, I would Look say. Look both sides oh, too. Oh yeah, over here too. The bolsters. We still got a nice uh, tear happening here. So oh, yeah. This thing has seen better days. Seat number two coming out here. It's in better shape than the driver's seat. Oh, what is that rat's nest under there? Ooh. What is that? I think it's just like paper or something. Why shredded is it all though. shredded up like that though? Mice, my man. It mice. almost looks like mice got in there. Ew. That's kind of gross. I think it's time for the shop vac to mount up those pole positions. Recaro does include these side mount brackets now. I believe these used to be optional and you had to pay more for them, but now they think they seem to be included with the pole positions and presumably their other race seats. You guys may know more about that than I do, but when I looked online, these seem to be packaged together. And as you can tell, these side brackets are very heavy duty. Nice little gussets in here. And you can either floor mount these or mount them on a slider. And these, these side mounts are just like the seat, are FIA certified. So these are, are legal for use in sanctioned motorsports. And that's part of the beauty of these is that you can bolt them in your car and they're gonna pass tech anywhere. So in our case though, because these brackets are quite tall, you lose a lot of headroom with these versus say a lower seat rail design like we've decided to go with on the Miata because headroom is at a premium in a small car like that. So we looked at all our options. We looked on all the forums. Lots of guys use custom setups where they like pound the center tunnel or even cut the rear mount out on the driver's side to lower this, the back of the seat down. There's lots of aggressive ways to mount a seat in a Miata. And in those cases, guys are mounting the seat just for one driver. So it's okay to like put it on the floor and get it as low as you can. And those are all like big guy solutions in this car. But in our case, because we're gonna have multiple drivers, of all sizes, we wanted the seat to be on a slider, but as low as we could get it. And to do that, we've decided to go with Nagisa Auto's super low seat rails. So as you can see, this is a slider with side mounts welded on, and it has accommodations for the factory belt buck, uh, seat belt buckle, which Pete's already swapped over. It's got a locker for the slider just on one side, interestingly enough, but it comes with like this nice little billet piece that screws onto the end of the lever bolted in the passenger seat here just to test fitment a little bit and as you can see it's a really tight fit here on the corner of the uh, but it does fit in there and when we close the door it does make just a tiny bit of contact there but it's all in all I think it fits very well considering how tight this car is 
I would say these fit a little better in this car than the SPGs did in the S2000, which were hitting a little more on this area of the seat. So let me jump in here and see how we're doing for, uh, for headroom and comfort. And man, it's they feel good, great. DP. They feel great. You can't beat Recaros for comfort. Why is it? I, I must have a Recaro body. I know everybody said it is a tight fit with racing buckets in the Miata, but man, it's a really tight fit. Holy smokes. So the seat is in and uh, we can't really get it any further back here. I think it could slide a little bit further, but it's hitting up in this area here. We already removed like the rubber part to see if we could go any further. However, that's about it. Um, it's good, like you, you, it's a decent driving position, but anybody bigger may be in trouble. The steering wheel's too big, so I think we're gonna tackle that next. Let's get this junky wheel off of here. And now we remove our clock spring, because we're not using that, and uh, to bolt on our aftermarket steering wheel, I bought this flash power flash hub power. adapter. Yeah, it's a short hub. Uh, I think it was like, $50 on Amazon. Okay. Link will be in the description for those of you that are on a budget. And uh, the one thing that you need to figure out with this is we still want this car to be road legal and we still want this car to have a horn. So we have to adapt away from taking this wire here, which is the horn wire, and hooking it up to the back with like a piece of uh, copper tabbing. So here is what the solution is. Honda made these amazing little brass tabs. There's the product number for you guys, just in case. I will also provide a link in the description for that. But check this out. So this is an, a very simple brass tab, and what it's gonna do is go like that, make contact with the back of the hub, and it'll be golden. So all I have to do is figure out how to mount this now in here. Mounted it up here. We've got a little jumper wire running to the existing connector there. So now it is time to install our flash power hub here and it's just like that we're gonna bolt this on and we're gonna show you our budget steering wheel because it is a beauty well we weren't lying after all when we call this a budget build because uh, this is where we're saving our money everyone look at this beautiful relic DP where is this thing from This came out of Connie Celica you go back to season one of that series you might, you'll recognize this thing it's how the car came from Arizona and as you can see Ooh. The Arizona desert heat has done its job on wow, all the stitching. Like it's falling apart oh, everywhere. Oh man, it, it's, it's not great, but boy, does it ever have some sentimental value. And, you know, I think a little Connie in this car is just going to make it better. So, and, and better yet, it came with a free quick release hub, everybody. Look at this faux carbon fiber on here. I mean, this thing just screams classy race car to me. So, we'll just slam that on there, and a little bit of dust falls out of it. Come on now, you really didn't think we were actually gonna use this wheel. Like this is next level garbage. Look at this, Dave. Oh, oh. it's just, it's gone. So you cannot nasty. put somebody in a car with that wheel. No, no, it's a death. That's so a death I went into my stash and found this, which I think is a super cool wheel. It is. It's a Nardi uh, edition uh, to Torino, Torino it, which okay. is actually, I think, Mazda does have Nardi Edition wheels in them. So this would have been a very fitting wheel. However, the bolt pattern on this wheel does not match the one of the quick release. Oh. So that is out. We went upstairs again into the stash and pulled out this. Our Ooh, Monte Carlo steering about wheel. That wheel. Yeah, this I think was originally in the Z and it fit the, the quick release perfectly. So now with it on, look at that, lots of space still underneath to do our heel towing action. And I think obviously it looks exceptionally good. If some of you remember back in the modified magazine days, it was a magazine that I ran way back when, Dave worked for as well. And uh, this was one of the first shift knobs I installed in my S14. So it has been kicking around for a long time and I think it is now time for it to make its way into the Miata because conveniently the thread pitch is the same. Yeah, so well, what are the chances? There you go. We just have to get that thing on nice and straight. There we are. Would you look at that? And I, I kind of like it. I don't think it's too high. It mimics the stock uh, shifter in many ways. 
Last upgrade in the interior for today is this very special little black box. This is Race Pack's Vantage CL1, part of their track day kit. So this, unlike most other data acquisitions you might be familiar with, isn't actually recording the data. It's just collecting the data and then via Bluetooth sending it to your mobile device. So either your iOS or Android equipped phone or tablet. It's a pretty unique approach to data and I think it's very cool the way this all works. So I'll, I'll give you a bit of a rundown now, but we'll show you this in much more detail when we actually get to the track and can really show you how this all works. So consider this a bit of teaser, but to install it, it's very simple. You've got these three mounting points. You can mount it anywhere in the car. Uh, in Race Pack's video, they actually just kind of mount it on like a suction cup mount in the, the cup holder. So it's very, you know, you can mount it in any position you want. It's got a 20 hertz chipset inside. So very fast data, it's, it samples uh, your position 20 times a second, which is gonna give you the most accurate data. It's, a lot of other systems on the market are like 10 hertz or five hertz, so this is very powerful little unit. Comes with the optional OBD2 cable, so we'll get access to all the OBD data through the, through the Vantage. Comes with a, uh, obviously with a magnetic uh, antenna. But where things get really interesting is with their D3 app. So all the data goes to your phone or your tablet like this, and you can see the data is all here. And this can, either be, uh, this can either be live streamed, so I can literally watch what Pete's doing or what our YouTube guest drivers are doing in real time while they're out on the track. It'll show me where they are on the track, it'll show me their throttle position, their brake pedal position if we wire those in. It'll show us uh, engine RPM, it'll show us speed. So it's, it's, oops, it's, it's a really unique system that way that we can add anyone we want to our cloud account. So with this system, if you get their optional cloud account, which I think costs about 10 bucks a month, you can add all your teammates to it and they can watch you at the track in real time or after the fact. So the data actually gets recorded to your tablet or to, or to your iPhone. And it also goes to the cloud from here. And once it's in the cloud, it's there forever. So you'll always have access to it, whether you're looking at it in real time or after the fact. So that's a quick uh, overview of how that works. You can see it's all very mobile friendly. You know, it's like pinch and zoom. You can see they've overlaid this track on, this is uh, Streets of Willow on Google Earth, which is, I think, pretty cool to see. We can go back to the data here. We can zoom in on this stuff here where you can see we've got engine RPM, GPS speed, and throttle position. And just like that, we have mounted up the Vantage Seal 1 unit on these little uh, rubber isolators that come with the kit. We've run power to it and the GPS antenna to it. We will wire in the tack signal so we get all that going to our phone, which We've just thrown up here on the dash on a little magnetic post, but we'll put a proper suction cup mount for this phone uh, in, the, in the car so that we can see it in lap timer mode. So when you, as soon as you start to drive at the track, this, this will automatically switch into lap timer mode. It'll show you your lap time. This is really cool, like predictive lap timing thing too, where it'll show you your running lap time. And if it's in red, it means you're behind your best lap time. And if it's green, it means you're ahead of it. Anyway, we'll show you all that in a future episode. But what we're, what we're not going to do is let the drivers during the Miata Challenge episodes see their lap times. So we're going to give them, say, five laps to set their best time, and they're not going to know what their lap times were until we get them back in the paddock and have a chat with them. But we'll know what their lap times are because we're going to be streaming all of this live from our Race Pack Cloud account. So stay tuned for all of that. And I think that's pretty much a wrap on this episode, PT. We got nothing left to do here, do we? Well, yeah, we need to mention the whole thing about cutting the door card. Oh, the door cards, yeah. We do have some interference with the shoulder of the seat on the door card, but we've decided before we do any hacking and cutting, we want to install the roll bar because we're not sure how far back the roll bar is gonna allow the seats to go. So until we know that, we really don't want to start modifying other things. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. That is a wrap on this Budget Build Miata episode. We have a few more build episodes coming at you before we get this thing ready for its maiden voyage at the racetrack. So stay tuned for lots more Miata action coming at you. And like all things from Japan, it comes wrapped in newspaper from Japan. We've got uh, some 14-inch tires here for $378 and some 14-inch wheels for $278. What a deal. And uh, for those of you that are shopping for other things, they even have some uh, adult entertainment happening here. So kids, divert your eyes.